Widely known as the king of the jungle, most lions actually live in the savanna or grasslands. Nowadays, only a small population of forest-dwelling lions remain in Gir National Park, India. Lions are not the biggest or strongest animal either, but the fact is, the king doesn't need to be the strongest. Just think about your family and who has to do the dishes at the end of the day. Well, you get the idea. Excuse me? But then, how come lions have been crowned king of the jungle while they're not living in the jungle? To answer this question, first, let's take a look at their appearance. The most common depiction of the king of the jungle is this. A male lion standing proudly with his magnificent mane cascading over his shoulders. Have you ever seen the majestic Mufasa in Disney's famous movie? In reality, a male lion's mane makes it extremely difficult for his opponents to seize him and suffocate or shatter his neck. The mane also makes him look bigger, stronger, and of course, more attractive to the lioness. Any other cat species, big or tiny, doesn't really have a mane. This exclusivity offers lions a distinct advantage similar to that of a king's crown. The lion is the only cat that lives in groups called prides. Each pride consists of somewhere between 2 and 40 lions, including 3 or 4 males, several females, and their cubs. They live in their territory, with a male lion being the leader. His main responsibility is to protect his pride from attacks by other animals. He will also compete with other male lions for ownership, and if he is unable to do so, he should give way to his opponent and leave the pride. Well, if you lost your pride, it might be a psychological problem. But if a lion lost his pride, he might lose everything. This way of life is very similar to that of a king who lives among his people, in his own kingdom, vowing to protect them at all costs. And when he falls, a new king will rise. It's a Game of Thrones. Let us now see the tiger. Well, he might be the strongest and most skillful of all the cats. He hunts for his own food. He does not want any other animal to be seen in his territory. Even if his stomach is full, he will not allow any other animal to touch his prey. Because of the lack of a pride system, there is no concept of pride protection for tigers. All the things he does are for himself. A tiger's lifestyle is more like a lone warrior who guards his territory than a king who defends his kingdom. I'm sorry, tiger, but a true king must protect his people. Otherwise, he's just a ruler. On the other hand, lions are feared for their hunting skills. The king might not be the strongest, but he knows how to form an army, create a smart strategy, and lead the pride to win the battle. This is exactly true for lions when it comes to group hunting. For example, they form a semicircle by fanning out, with the smaller lioness strategically herding the prey towards the center. Once the prey is cornered, the whole team will attack. They often target the rear and the legs to drag it down or bite at the neck to quickly kill the victim. The vision of a lion is approximately six times more sensitive to light than that of humans, giving them a distinct advantage when hunting at night. Their claws are retractable, reaching up to 1.5 inches in length, giving them tremendous control when they need to go in for the kill. Lions can also run at a speed of 80 kilometers per hour for short periods and jump up to 10 meters. Pretty impressive, right? Situations that would frighten other animals do not appear to frighten the king's smallest hare. I'll give you a specific example. The elephant is the largest land animal and is widely regarded as the only land animal without a predator. But a pride of lions can occasionally kill an elephant, whereas most other animals would rather die of starvation than attacking the giant. Lions are also heavy eaters, consuming up to 88 pounds or 40 kilos of meat in a single day which is roughly one quarter of their body weight. But usually, they only need to eat somewhere between 10 and 25 pounds every day. Although females do most of the hunting, male lions will eat first at a kill, while the lioness and the cubs will wait their turn. The females put up with this behavior because the males offer protection for the whole pride. This is much like the lifestyle of a king, being first, being served, being respected for power. In addition, a male lion sleeps up to 20 hours per day with a few lionesses always around, in a true king's fashion. My cat also sleeps that much, I think, and I have to bring him food too. Am I a female lion? 
We've talked about how the king eats and sleeps. Now let's take a look at how they make these adorable cubs. We all love babies, right? In a pride, the male leader is usually the first to mate with other females. Several lionesses are likely to be in heat at the same time. Females may also mate with multiple partners. This happens when the pride leader grows tired of them during their cycle, which is when the lesser males get their chance. Much like human civilization, the king is the first to have all the beautiful women. Typically, a king will have a devilish supervillain enemy. The classic storyline, you know? And in this case, I think the king's worst enemy is the hyena. <laughs> Lions and hyenas share geographical ranges in Africa and feed on the same prey. The rivalry fuels animosity in their relationship. When these animals cross paths, they react aggressively, sometimes for no apparent reason. These two regularly steal from one another. Although hyenas are known as scavengers and thieves, they are also active and dangerous predators in their own right. A group of hyenas can frequently use teamwork to scare lions away from their prey. Sometimes, when a lion is alone, hyenas can even become the hunter. In return, Lions have learned to recognize hyena feeding calls and hunt them back. They track the calls to their source and they pursue the hyenas away from their prey. Male lions have been observed harassing or killing hyenas on several occasions. So while hyenas often laugh hysterically, lions can be the last ones to laugh if they are not careful. In contrast to the hyena's laugh, the lion has a mighty roar that can scare away any other animals. The king must know how to show power through his words, right? Lion cubs start to vocalize when they are born, but they sound like little kittens. Meanwhile, a male lion's roar can reach the loudness of 114 decibels and can be heard up to 8 kilometers away. Well, in case numbers do not make sense to you, it's equal to a rock concert. Legend has it that in Shaolin Kung Fu, there is an ultimate skill called lion's roar which imitates the animal's sound, and when the skill is executed, it can cause severe damage to the opponent, like this. Speaking of Shaolin Kung Fu, did you know that the lion has long been an important symbol in Buddhist tradition? This animal holds a strong correlation with many Buddhas and Bohisattvas. Lions are also highly appreciated in a lot of Asian countries. People often place their statues at the entrance of buildings, and regard them as imperial guardians. From Asia to Europe and Africa, you can find lions in many ancient pantheons. Different cultures have different characteristics, but in general, they all associate lions with royalty and divinity. Powerful, brave, protective. These traits make lions a perfect representation of the deities. And since they are the animal of the gods, it's easy to understand why they're chosen to be the king. From ancient times to the modern era, their image has been used in various emblems and logos to show strength, authority, and wisdom. Okay, we've talked a lot about why the lion should be the king, but how about the jungle part? Actually, most lions now live in the savanna or grasslands, not the jungle. So why exactly are lions king of the jungle anyway? Maybe it's because there's no more jungle for them due to deforestation. Well, that might not be the right answer. But the truth is, this animal once roamed the earth. As I said before, lions were living with humans in many civilizations across the world. Other fossil and historical records show the same thing. They used to exist in almost every continent. This makes me think that the name King of the Jungle may turn out to be true in old times. Anyway, it's just the past. Now we have modern cities and animals are losing their homes. However, here's the real reason why they're called King of the Jungle, with an interesting twist. Jungle is a word derived from Hindi, Janga, which means uncultivated ground or not an inhabited place. It is unclear how the term jungle came to be understood in British English as a thick tropical forest with creepers and so on. In rural North India, the term jungle is still used to describe fields and common grasslands. Well, I hope these answers satisfy you. Thanks for watching, and if you've learned something new today, please comment below and share your thoughts. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. See you next time. Bye!